Thanks for listening to the Lakers Fast Break Podcast, part of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Check out all their awesome basketball shows today at hoopheadspod.com. another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Lakerholics.com. Also Dash Radio, where we're on every Sunday morning. Plus, also as well, the great folks at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. It is sincerely appreciated. Well, let the NBA playoffs begin. And unfortunately for us as Lakers fans, it began the same way it did last year. With us down one game already. With a 99-90 to loss to the Phoenix Suns today in a gritty battle allowed game that I think that we were expecting because we were expecting a lot of hard nose action. We were expecting a lot of fighting, which we got in the fourth quarter with Montres Harrow, Alex Caruso, and Cameron Payne. We've got a lot of injuries, which Chris Paul suffered in the first half and LeBron because of Chris Paul happened in the second half. And we got a lot of defensive matchups, which we need to go ahead and look at and Unfortunately for the Lakers, the defense was better played on the Phoenix side as the Lakers, unfortunately, with several matchups that they need to go ahead and reevaluate going into next game, which we will do so and we'll talk about it. Plus, also, as well, we'll give you a recap of what's going on in the other playoff games as well. But first off, I want to go ahead and bring on a good friend of mine. He is the mastermind of Lakerholics.com. It is a good man indeed. He is not exactly thrilled. But then again, he's a little bit chipperier than what he was in the Portland series last year because he was kind of a little bit more angry then. But it is my good friend indeed. It is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, a disappointing effort overall, especially on the offensive end, could not manufacture points. Anthony Davis struggled mightily from the field, I think, with 13 points, 5 of 16. LeBron James, a little bit underwhelming himself, only took 13 shots, 18 points. Got a great effort from Alex Caruso. I give him credit. Ten points, but I mean more of what he's doing in the fourth quarter to try and bring the the team back on the defensive side I think really shows a lot of courage by him. Kuzma, even though there was a donut by him, I thought he played good defense at times. KCP struggled with only seven. I mean, there's a lot of places where you can point the finger, especially with 43% shooting and 27% from behind the three-point line. But the major thing to me was the free throw shooting. 60% in a playoff game. That's something that is really bad, but I want to go ahead and say this before I turn it over to you. When you have LeBron shoulder the load the whole time, that's not a good thing for the Lakers to go ahead and do. Well, it was a disappointing game and and a a really disappointing performance from Anthony. I was uh, just disgusted with Frank Vogel sticking with Andre Drummond and Montrez Harrell threw out the entire game until eight minutes left in the game. That's not the way to get LeBron James or Anthony Davis off to a good start. But as we saw, Anthony Davis in the last eight minutes of the game was playing center and just was always fading away from the basket, always never really contesting shots at the other end. Uh, Aiton basically schooled all of the Lakers centers, including Anthony Davis. And it was another one of these... Feel out games, you know, that you're so confident that you can just go out there and just try to continue the failed Andre Drummond experiment for three more quarters. If there was anything that came out of this game, I would hope it would be Frank Vogel taking a look at his rotations and going with Anthony Davis at the five. Davis volunteered that he's ready to play the five. Then why in the hell aren't we playing him at the five? 
right from the start of the game when we could get off to a good start rather than just continuing to try to crowd the lane with people to force the team to contest to have contested shots at the rim every time or jumpers from the outside. This was a this was a repeat of everything that I've feared, everything that I've really fought back against Frank Vogel and his decisions on on how to run things and uh, whatever edict he's getting from uh, the front office to play Andre Drummond regardless. Drummond's defense in the first half was non-existent. Aiton just basically ate him up in the first half, got him off to a good start. He was in the wrong place almost every single play. And for a coach who's supposedly a defensive-oriented coach, it just belittles me to feel I figure out what the hell he's trying to do in this particular thing with that type of setup on the offense. I mean, we saw what happened in the play-in game. It's really no different against every team you play. Every team you play wants to clog up the middle, wants to count on the Lakers playing a, a old-school low-post center in the middle to help so that it's easy to sag off the guy and just contest the – and just make it really hard for LeBron and AD to get to the basket. He was actually, folks, a lot less chipper this time last year after game one against Portland. <laughs> 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 if that it's can true. be anything it's out true. there to you, he it's is true. angry right now. But the anger is a lot more, uh, I guess. Uh, By the fourth a lot quarter, louder, I just basically gave up on this game. The, the Lakers played lousy. Let's I just, just didn't want to have there. a heart attack over, over Frank Vogel's, you know, <laughs> coaching no, decision. No, uh, Gerald can't handle that. Gerald can't handle that. He doesn't well, want that on again, the show. You know, he's he, Laker. Tom was a little. They had even more vitriol last year. But the Lakers played a lousy game. They played right into the hands of the two young stars, Devin Booker and also DeAndre Ayton. Those two starred today. They they had an uh, opportunity to go ahead and take this game had they make their free throws. Just if they make their free throws, if they make nine out of 12, they tie the game, which tells people out there as far as it's concerned, because they missed 12 free throws. Had they made nine of those, they would have tied the game. And that puts it right there for you. But also here today with us is a good man indeed from the five. Things and I know he's going to have five things to say about what's going on at Lakerholics.com. It is Jamie Sweet and Jamie Sweet. Uh, you got to be disappointed again. The young stars reign supreme today, but to, for me, the most disappointing was yes, the shoulder contusion happened to Chris Paul, but he had a point where Chris Paul was basically ineffective for most of the game today, and you didn't capitalize on it. And to me, that was a shame indeed. I mean, I, I thought the Lakers got out physical, outplayed, out coached, out. I mean, you you put a category up there. Phoenix did better than us in that category. It doesn't matter what. I mean, maybe we might have got to the arena earlier. Maybe we won that battle. The <laughs> who got to the arena first battle, which we all know is clutch in the playoffs. Yeah, this is beyond disappointing. Really, this was just you know. It seems like the Lakers did this a lot last year, though. They'd come out really flat for the first game kind of expect the opponent to roll over and then be like, oh, well, I guess we got to beat these guys. Oh, huh? well, they're not going to just – Did it twice last year. No, it I, it twice. I, yeah, and I was a little worried we were going to do it in the play-in game, to be honest with you, and we kind of started off like that way in the play-in game. And then, we did do it in the play-in game. What are you I know. About? We just got lucky. We got lucky in the play-in game is what happened. Yep. You know, we, we got yep. a little bit lucky. I mean, you, you talk about that free throw issue. You know what's not going to happen in any other games? We're not going to shoot like 20 more free throws than the Suns or whatever it ended up being. Phoenix, I don't think, shot at one free throw in the entire first half, and we shot 17. That's not going to happen in any other game in this series. Phoenix came with a you-got-to-beat-us attitude, and the Lakers came with a we-really-like-to-win guys, and that's never going to get it done uh, in the playoffs in any in any measurable way shape or form i think you're gonna i'll be surprised if drummond starts going forward uh, i'll be surprised it's I funny because aiden, aiden well it, that's what i was about to say i mean aiden is somebody he ought to actually match up okay with you know it's not like deandre aiden some you know gazelle of a center you know leaping and flying around the court with speed they're both kind of like hey we like to play in the paint and you know drummond's supposed to be good at boxing out he wasn't boxing anybody out. He, he was he was he was just kind of you know paying the rent and taking up space on the block. So 
that's, you know, it's just not going to get it done. And uh, let's be honest, this is his first playoff game, his real, whatever the play-ins were, are, are uh, I guess, a weird version of the All-Star game. Whatever those are, uh, you know, I guess they don't count. So this was his first playoff game, and he was terrible. I thought, actually, I thought Kuzma played terrible. You can't just take two shots if you're Kyle Kuzma. You're you're one of the better shooters on the team. You and nobody's like the game plan isn't to stop Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma stops himself, or he doesn't, and he stopped himself tonight. You know, if everybody played, I know, you know, I know he's not the most talented. I know he doesn't have the most skills, but if everybody played with the heart and passion of Alex Caruso, I don't think we would lose. 10 games a season and they don't, they just don't, they just show up like, well, we're the Lakers and uh, that doesn't get it done in the playoffs and, and hats off to Phoenix, you know, hats off to Phoenix. You know, we didn't, we didn't force a broken down Chris Paul to beat us. We let Chris Paul pass the ball away and, and do Chris Paul stuff on defense, which is grab and hold and push and, you know, do his little undercut sweet. LeBron. Undercut LeBron, his stupid little silly tricks that make me hate Chris Paul as a basketball player, even though I kind of like him as a human being, I guess. Uh, I've never met him, so I can't really even say that. Uh, I'm not too fond of his commercials. This was just a game that Phoenix probably played as well as they can play, and if they can keep this going, they'll win the series. If we play 10% better than we did today, we'll probably win most games like this. And that's what the Lakers should walk away from. But if we show up with the attitude that that's how we're going to win, we won't win any games and we'll be gone in the first round. Well, we're not going to be able to go ahead and have a game where both AD and LeBron don't reach 20 points. Anthony Davis was garbage today. This, yeah, he had a yeah. garbage game. He had a and garbage this, this, game. This happens once every four or five games where he plays like this. And hopefully he'll learn from this. And he'll come back strong with a dominant performance next time. That's what that's what's happened traditionally over the past two years. And that's what I'm looking forward to again. But we'll see what happens. And also here today is a good man indeed. Not wearing the MSU colors today. He is wearing the champions hat right now. You got to go ahead and check out what he's doing today at Lakerholics.com with his great comments there. It is, El Rob. For me, I'm being a little bit optimistic because we did the same deal last year twice in the first and second round so i'm not you know the lakers played awful today this was at the lakers at their very lowest as far as the team is concerned so i'm not too concerned that the, like like jamie says 10 percent more and they've got this game won i don't know about 10 percent, but yeah definitely it's definitely a winnable game phoenix doesn't really present that many problems i don't think as far as beating us in a seven game series but you can see phoenix has heard uh, you know all the talk about them getting wiped out by the lakers and uh and they brought it today. They were ready from the opening tip. They ran the court. To me, the biggest difference in the game was Phoenix ran and the Lakers jogged. There was a play, I think LeBron turned it over in the third quarter. He turned it over, trying to throw a pass to AD. Aiden's like three steps behind AD, and he outruns them to the basket and, you know, gets an easy basket. I must have seen a different game than, than Tom and Jamie because drumming wasn't the problem today. I think Drummond went out of the game with the game being 15-15 in the first quarter. He was getting all kind of offensive rebounds and um, and the stuff. 12 the, the points, stuff nine Aiden, rebounds is what he finished with, just to let everybody yeah, know. Yeah, the, the stuff Aiden scored on wasn't really on Drummond. It was on guys dropping it off when, yeah, nah, he probably was in the wrong position on a few of them, on, on, on some of those. And he's not the best defensive player. But you don't just throw everything out the window and just go small against Phoenix. No, you punish them. We can beat them by being bigger. And then you use AD strategically. When they first went to AD at the five for a couple minutes in the first, in the second quarter, they didn't have a real, uh, they didn't have Trez out there. They put AD at the five for a couple minutes and it was garbage. It don't matter who's at the five. If AD is not going to bring it, then we have no chance. So I don't know why we want to harp on Dre. That's the least of our problems today. KCP's got to hit open shots. You know, he's got to bring it. KCP doubles Chris Paul in the lane and leaves Booker open for a three. I mean, it's... Well, Kuzma, great defense today, but he's got to give you more than a donut on offense. Yeah, he's got to look to score, too. So, I mean, it's a collectively. So, it's not... I mean, it's not It's it's not that simple that, hey, just play AD at the five and magically everything's going to be great. No, you got a 12-man roster. Use your roster. Teams got to play harder. They got to play smarter. When they win that... And when they do that, they'll dis- dispatch this Phoenix Suns team um, handily. So 
I'm not that worried about it. It is disappointing to see the lack of urgency and the lack of effort. But you really have to give Phoenix credit because Phoenix came out. I mean, they were literally, you don't see teams come out running as fast as Phoenix was. Phoenix was pushing the ball at every opportunity in the first half. They made a concerted effort and they fed off the energy of the crowd and they got the Lakers behind. And, you know, tip your hat to them. Booker was held in check by the Lakers pretty good the last time they played. And he came and he devised the plays with him coming off that pick. And the Lakers didn't figure it out. They didn't figure it out with Drummond in the game. They didn't figure it out with Drummond out of the game. They didn't figure it out with Davis at the five. That play killed us all game. So Lakers got to bring better effort, better scoring. Caruso could, couldn't. I mean, Caruso didn't make open shots. Uh, Kuzma wouldn't shoot the ball. You know, so it was, it was pretty bad offensively all the way around. Of course, I mean, LeBron's got to attack more. He, you know, he hit some threes early, and he kind of settled into a three-point shooting groove most of the game. Take Bridges down on the box. Punish him. That's where you got the advantage. Take him down there and punish him. This is Raphael from NBADraftJunkies.com, and you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Hey, hoop heads. We all hate ankle sprains, and they happen way too often. Ankle injuries are the number one sports-related injury. Arise is trying to change that. With the iFast, your athletes get preventative protection and full mobility. Athletes no longer need to wear bulky braces that limit performance and give mediocre protection. Anyone playing sports should be using these products. Keep your athletes in the game. Don't wait for them to get hurt to take action. Visit www.arise.com, spelled A-R-Y-S-E, and use the code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off the future of performance. That's A-R-Y-S-E dot com with promo code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off. Once again, it's the Lakers fast break and the Lakers in game one of the NBA playoffs fell to the Phoenix Suns 99 to 90. Want to go ahead and mention real quick our great chat board. V Garcia said, I've said this multiple times. If KCP starts off hot, the team starts to roll. Unfortunately, KCP wasn't hot today. Struggling game, only seven points. JC Armeza says, better luck next game, Lakers. Always a Lakers fan. So JC, we've got nothing but love for you as well. Also want to give a big shout out to Felix. J. John Cerceda is back. Good to see you, J. John. Felix, thank you so much as always for being a part of today's show. I know Renz, Renz, we'll get this turnaround, Renz. I know we will. Harold is better than Drummond. I, I, that's up for debate, Renz. I know, uh, you know, Drummond has his issues. So does Harold. We saw today the fire that Harold had, especially, and, but unfortunately it was just right after stoppage of play and was fighting and all that. But you know what? There was some fire there, hopefully to get the Lakers more energized, maybe going forward. So we'll see what happens, Renz, as well. And then just want to make sure everybody out there knows we appreciate all the great comments out there and cannot thank you enough for being part of the Lakers fast break. But also here today for his thoughts on the Lakers loss in game one, similar to what he had last year in game 20, some thoughts on the Lakers loss. But then again, we turned around and won a championship. So who knows? He's a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and check out what he does for Lakerholics.com. It is a returning Sean Grice, a.k.a. Magic Man. Thank you for being back. Welcome back. And your thoughts, unfortunately, on your welcome back on a disappointing effort for the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, Casey struck out today, Gerald. It's a sad day in Mudville. Before I get started, Elias Sports has just come out with uh, an interesting stat. DeAndre Ayton is the second player in NBA playoff history to shoot over 90% while scoring 20 points and grabbing 15 rebounds. The first was Bill Russell. So his age is smiling ear to ear because Ayton is due for a huge extension. And something like that will just only ascend his birth. I agree with just about everybody on the panel. It was uh, it was a disappointing effort. You know, what Lee said was, was, was hit the nail on the head. Phoenix was second in pace. They want to play a fast game. They, they'll they play up and down offensively and defensively. They, um, the idea that Jamie said that the Lakers were out coached today, I completely agree with that because, to me, when I look at Monty Williams, he has different 
roles for different players and they execute their roles for him and it's it's mutable he can play big he can play small but i thought we would try and out physical the Suns because we are a big team but for some reason alex doesn't want to dig into uh booker's um bag and and he's giving him too much room and Booker is just, he's by his hip, and as soon as he's at the rim, he's 80, you know, half a second too slow. It's not default. He's making the right rotation. It's just, it's it's a half a second off. So Vogel really needs to uh, look at the film, and because and, he got out coached. Monty Williams really took him to school today. Um, and like you said, Gerald, as soon as Chris Paul was tentative with his shot, and we were only down 8, 10 points, that's that's when the fire in the belly, I mean, if it, it wasn't already there, it should have been, but that, that's when it was time to go. The score makes it look like a closer game than it really was. I never really felt we were in the game after after they went up by 12. It was 65-53. To me, that was when they put the nail in the coffin. Like that, No matter what we did, we could get it down to 7 or 8, and then they just bumped it up to 12 or 13. Again, Aiden, as I'm saying in the chat, you can't be 10 for 11 every single game. So I expect Aiden to at least not shoot as well. He's always going to be above a 50% shooter just because of the fact he catches the lobs and offensive rebounds like he did. If you can keep him off the boards, but you can also go ahead and uh, you know, the key is Booker. You got to go ahead and make life more difficult for him. He cannot be 13 for 26 shooting. If he is, that's going to spell a lot of trouble. I was going to ask you this, Elrob, you know, with Booker, to me, that was the key because he 13 for 26 today, obviously a great game for him. Aiton, I think, is going to get come and go uh, as far as a force in this series. I think the Lakers can find a better answer for him, an easier answer for him. But to me, it's about Booker. What do you think the Lakers need to do to go ahead and play Booker a little bit better so that it makes life a little bit harder and thus a little bit harder as far as more, sh- you know, his shooting is concerned? Because Again, 13 for 26, you cannot let a player go off like that. Yeah, I, I like what uh, um, what Magic Man said. You got to crowd him a little bit more. I didn't think we crowded him enough first. Secondly, you cannot let him come right. You cannot let him come downhill. So you got to force him to the left, and then you can bring some help as needed. Maybe don't double him as much. Just, you know, just come straight up. I don't think KCP played his best defensive game. He, you know, he he's usually a lot better than he was today defensively. So I don't know if it really requires a much different strategy, just better effort. And, uh, you know, maybe slight execution and maybe forcing him left a little bit more um, and, you know, do a better job of forcing him away from the may have to ice the pick, force him away from that. Don't let him use that a little bit more. Um, Lakers have the guys who can get up in him, uh, Caruso and, and uh, and KCP can defend them better. And Matthews in a pinch, too, although I think he's a little too shifty for, for Wes, really. Um, but that's what I would look at doing. When he's driving, though, I think you want to commit a little bit more. He's usually looking to score off the drive. When he's getting two feet in the, in the paint, I thought AD could have committed a little bit quicker and forced him to dump off a one or two. Force him to do that, and then, you know, let me see him make some passes off the dry. But, again, I'm looking forward to a bounce-back game for the Lakers come Tuesday, and we'll be here to go ahead and cover it for you right after the game. But, you know, there's still more to talk about with today's game. I know, Jamie, you're still upset over this. Again, (laughs) this is something that I think – these are things that we can easily work on because the Lakers, I think, cannot play any worse than this. You cannot have LeBron just scoring 18 and AD scoring just 13 and, and and the Lakers missing 13 free throws and doing all that. I know they're not a great free throw and shooting team. Uh, I think if the Lakers can go ahead and just turn one of these things around and not everything is going to go right for Phoenix like it did today, I think there's some just tweaks that you can make that's going to turn this thing around in favor of the Lakers. I, I agree. I mean, I don't. I I'm not of the opinion that everything did really go right for Phoenix uh, today. I think that you know, they, like I said at the beginning, they won't we won't shoot 17 free throws to zero in the first half ever again uh, in this series. Um, 
And even they didn't really even, you know, sometimes you'll see the refs like try to even it out over the course of the game. Like they didn't really try to do that. I thought they called it pretty straight up the whole game. Uh, I think, you know, another issue I have with this game tonight was that between Schroeder and LeBron, they had nine turnovers and 13 assists. Ten of those were LeBron's. Uh, you know, Dennis Schroeder's got to do a better job taking care of the ball, and we've said it all season long. LeBron James, in a playoff atmosphere, if he's not going to score, also has to take care of the ball better. And, you know, he got his 10 assists. You know, their superstars out, outplayed our superstars. Aiden and Booker outplayed LeBron and AD, and it's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. And I have to agree with El Rob. This this game is not on Andre Drummond's feet. I, the only reason I can imagine them not starting Drummond is to open up spacing, uh, not because he played poorly, but because he just takes up the he takes up a lot of real estate, he, and that that's that's what I I, I would uh, swing a little more towards Tom's. Uh, there's no reason to ever play Andre Drummond or a guy over seven feet who can't run fast ever again. It doesn't matter. Like I think I think El Rob hit it on the head. It doesn't matter where what kind of lineup we trot out if we're going to play low energy, low intensity, and not compete hard. This is not rocket science. We're not like you know it's not like we ran a bunch of bad plays or, you know, did a bunch of things that are uncharacteristic for our team. We turned the ball over 14 times, which is actually really good for our team. Most of them were from our two best ball handlers, which that's the issue is that we didn't get quality looks at the basket. The guys who are supposed to generate quality looks for other guys didn't do that job well enough. So that's, that's sort of where I think this game got lost. And again, you know, we can harp on what the Lakers did, but we should not overlook how well Phoenix played. They played a great game. They, they came into their house. They did what they were supposed to do. They're supposed to win game one and set a tone, and they did that. So, you know, hats off to the Suns. They played like a team that had a week of steady time. I guess. They did have played, and they looked rested. They looked rested, and we look like how we've looked all year, which is like, oh, man, when can we get to the NBA Finals? Like, you're not going to get there if you play like this. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just not going to happen. Felix, thanks for watching. We truly appreciate it. We know you got grandpa duties, so go ahead and take care of that. But again, we, as <laughs> always, we truly appreciate you being part of the deal here. Also, again, want to give big shout outs to JC. Go ahead, of course. V Garcia is here as well. Want to make sure Jay John Sorceta, welcome back. Also, Renz, because the Lakers will go ahead and get on the right track and we'll get that, that adobo made because the Lakers will win that championship. We're very, still very positive. In fact, like I said, this happened last year. The first two series, Lakers fell down 1-0, got things right. So I'm expecting big things from the Lakers. And, of course, hopefully we will see that as well on Tuesday. But our last thoughts on today's game before we hit the rest of the playoffs will come from you, Laker Tom, my friend. Wanted to go ahead and hear your thoughts on what you think the Lakers need to work on so that they will go ahead and rebound in game two like we're all expecting. Well, I take umbrage at the idea that The scheme that you go out with and the lineup that you put out on the floor to start the game doesn't have anything to do with what happens in the game. It has everything to do with what happens in the game. If you constantly put a low post player like Drummond or Harrell in the middle, it makes it a lot harder for LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Dennis Schroeder, Taylor Horton Tucker to get to the rim. It changes the entire complexion dynamic of the game. And the biggest mistake that the Lakers made is that it affects both ends of the court. Your rotations are terrible with Drummond in there, especially when you do the dribble handoff on a double screen for Booker coming around to the right hand on his right side. And especially when you're trying to get AD shots closer to the rim as opposed to his normal power forward fadeaway jumpers. It's all on Frank Bogle from the start. Anthony Davis didn't do anything to help the game. LeBron did did very little, and I'm actually starting to worry about LeBron's health in general because he did not have any lift on a lot of the times when he was going into the rim, and he got several shots blocked, and, and basically you start to have to wonder about the rumors about whether or not he's working on one leg in this series. But it really comes down to optimizing schemes that will help your players play to their best. Everybody knows the Lakers are best when we play with Anthony Davis at center. The team is better. LeBron is better. Anthony Davis is better. We've spent a whole year futilely trying to not play our best lineups. Despite Anthony Davis saying he's willing to play center, he wants to play center in the playoffs. And that's going to cost us at some point in time. I don't think it's going to cost us in this series 
because I do think that we will adjust. AD will come back and have a dominant game. LeBron will come back and have a normal game. Aiton is not going to have this kind of game again in this series, I don't believe. But once we get to the next level and the, the seven and the conference finals, and if we make it to the NBA finals, it's not going to work with Andre Drummond at center. And it's not going to work offensively. It's not going to work defensively. It makes the other players that are key on this team, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and it undermines their play. Well, I also like to see him get more transition points as well. Something that something just to bring faster life lineup to the gets team. out there. Faster lineup yeah. plays better defense. Faster lineup gets back. I mean, Aiton had eight offensive rebounds. Yeah, eight that's, offensive rebounds. I like to I like to how check and see how many of those were with Drummond in the game. I agree. I agree, El Rob. I, 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 a, a lot of them were over Davis. A lot of them were over Davis or a Trez, yeah. who are supposed to be better rebounders. But they they just didn't bring the fire. You know <laughs> what, though? When it comes down to the breakdowns tonight, it's everybody's fault. Way too many breakdowns where a guy was alone and he had about three or four feet of airspace because defenders were too busy. to get thumbs up their butt on the perimeter. To me, rebounding and then also – defensively, they didn't do a super bad job. I mean, if you could have told me that they would hold the Phoenix Suns to 99 points, you're doing your job there because that's well under their average for the Mm -hmm. season. But then again, your offense needs to muster up more than 90 because you're not going to win many games in 90. This isn't the mid-1990s, so you're not (laughs) going to win games scoring 90. So we'll leave it at that. But again, I'm looking forward to a much better performance from the Lakers on Tuesday. I think all of us are as well. I think everybody in the chat board is still remaining positive, and I really appreciate you doing that because you're just lifting us up here on the show by you remaining positive. We're remaining positive. We've seen the song and dance before, round one and round two. And do I expect the Lakers to go win four straight? You never know. They did it last year, so we'll see what happens. But again, I'm expecting better things come Tuesday, and I know everyone is as well. We're signaling the ref for a quick timeout, but we'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. My last movie that I saw in the theaters was The Last Skywalker. I know, condolences to me. Wow, man. Right. I, I just had talked about that and I completely forgot that I saw that movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, it doesn't speak great things about it, I suppose. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Catch our shows on Worldwide Radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. But let's go ahead, and before we head on out, I want to go ahead and hit the playoffs. And things could be worse, Laker Tom. Things could be worse. I want you to go ahead and find a little smile on your face, a little smile, because things could be worse because you could be a Clippers fan right now. You could have gotten smoked (laughs) by Luka Doncic. What? That would never, 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 ever happen. Right, totally. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You could be one, and you could be really bummed because you lost at home by (laughs) 10, to Luka Doncic. So, I mean, things could be worse there for you. I mean, we'll start off with, uh, I want to hear your thoughts, Jamie, on this. When it comes to the Clippers and Dallas, this is the matchup that a lot of people were pointing to that, okay, the Clippers, we thought were better going into the series. We thought they were a little bit more motivated. They knew what to expect. But you know what? Obviously, when it comes to Clippers, we do not know what to expect from them. Well, you can't because they've never played together. Like, this is the same thing that happened last season. You were like, well, this guy played with this guy a couple of times, and that guy played with those two guys for a couple of games, and Kawhi Leonard sat out for, like, 18 years, and, well, we'll see how we do in the playoffs. You know, and that's what I think is also going to happen to the Nets. Uh, You know, I I think that, you know, it's funny. Like, the regular season is easy to discount in the playoffs because the way that you play the playoffs is very different than the way you play in the regular season. You just in the regular season, you're just trying to get through it without getting hurt. You're trying to build something, some sort of identity over the course of the season, discover your strengths, discover your weaknesses, and then you roll into the playoffs, hopefully uh, able to utilize those weapons to the best of your ability as a team. 
Well, that doesn't it, happen with teams that don't get to play together. Like, you don't know what you're coming into the playoffs with. They're like, well, let's hope Kawhi Leonard goes off, or oh, let's hope George but then drops again, the then again, as we saw in the Brooklyn game, you know, it could work the other way around. This is the first time all season that they threw out that lineup, and you right. saw what happened there where they totally blitzed the Celtics in the second half of that game. And, you know, as as everybody, the joke here at Lakerholics.com now is that it'll be Brooklyn in two because, you know, they don't think it'll, <laughs> they'll call the mercy rule on that one because it looked like – I don't like, think that. I don't think well, that. Well, I'm, I don't, I'm not of that up, I don't have a high opinion of the Nets, though, so I'm, well, I'm, this, I'm, I'm definitely in the minority there. It's I'm going to be a tough for the Celtics to get a game, in my opinion, if they're going to look like that because they are playing very well. But L. Rob, we've already mentioned the Clippers and Dallas, uh, you know, obviously – Clippers got off to the early lead, one game to nothing. Brooklyn with a dominant performance in the second half against Boston. Uh, any thoughts on either of those, or did you want to talk about another matchup that's uh, right now? Milwaukee and Miami played into overtime with Milwaukee now leading one game to nothing. Maybe that's a sign of them to getting over the hump as far as it's concerned mentally, just as much physically. Philadelphia got a surprise from Washington, but pulled it out in the end. They're up one game to nothing. Denver last night, well, Denver and Portland. Portland pulled out a nice victory on the road in Denver, and they're already taking a lead, one to nothing on that one. So a lot of people that already have bet on Portland looking looking happy right there right now. So <laughs> a lot of good things to look forward to right now in the series that's out there. Playoffs are getting right now just really starting to get hot and heavy. But your thoughts on any of the games so far of your choice? Yeah, well, I thought the Clippers would come out better than they did. I mean, I knew Luca would be the best player on the court, and uh, they would have trouble. But I didn't expect Finney Smith and and Hardaway Jr. to, um, you know, have the bust-out games. Finney Smith has been doing it for the last month and a half, and he's continuing to do it. Hardaway has come on late in the season. He's playing much better. So that was a surprise. But, you know, Luca's got so much confidence against that team. But I think it's the rest of his guys feed off of that. The Miami game, the Miami game was pretty interesting. Jimmy, you know, Jimmy kind of said he was so ready for it and maybe he was overhyped because he couldn't yeah. throw it in motion until he sent it into overtime. Yeah. They yeah. did not shoot the ball well. I think I read a stat that was the first time that a team had lost by the three point battle by 45 points and still won a <laughs> Yeah, Miami couldn't, I mean, Milwaukee didn't make many threes. And uh, Butler played horrible. Butler played yeah. horrible. Yeah. So um, both of those teams probably can say they didn't play that well. Um, I don't think Giannis had his best game. Milwaukee didn't hit many threes. They suffered there. And then Bam, you know, Bam, I think he was like one for seven from the, you know, inside the restricted area. He couldn't make layups. So it's going to be interesting. I I still like Milwaukee in that series uh, in six, like I originally said on the podcast. Philly and Washington was pretty much as expected. Those games are going to be entertaining, fun games. But, I mean – Philly, I mean, Washington, Washington just don't have the firepower to really to really beat them. And um, I thought Portland's strategy of letting Joker go one-on-one paid off. And, and you know, he didn't punish them enough. They just kind of stayed at home with everybody else and and, and, and and took away his passing game. So it'll be interesting. That's the one game it'll be interesting to see kind of like what's the next move, what's the next chess move from a, a coach's standpoint. Mm-hmm. Sean, I wanted to ask you this. Anything sticks out to you so far in the NBA playoffs? I mean, like like L. Rob said, that chess move that was going on, the chess game that was going on in Denver, I agree that was a great move to just let Joker go one-on-one, let him try to become that scorer. And he scored over 30, but I thought he needed to go ahead and be even more aggressive, both him and MPJ, in order to go ahead and get the victory. And unfortunately that for them, that wasn't the case. And Portland had a nice idea of what to go in defensively. So we'll see if there's going to be adjustments being made there. But any series so far sticking out to you? Because there's been some good moments so far in this year's NBA playoffs. Yeah, Gerald. I'm just, just going to go back to the uh, the Clippers and the Mavs series. Last year, I, I think it, it was obviously a case of, of Luka being, being a little young, being a little green around the gills still with the uh, playoff experience. But he's played in uh, seven playoff games in his career and his three triple doubles. And <laughs> when he scored 30 or more in any game, he's gotten a triple double. The Mavs are undefeated. 
You could leave Kawhi Leonard on Chris Tapp's Porzingis. Rick Carlisle, he barely gives anything away on the sideline. If you watch that game, he had a little smirk on his face. The the first couple, like, even though KP was missing shots, he was still grinning. He, he had, like, the canary eating the, uh, the, the cat who ate the canary because he knew they're wasting their time leaving Kawhi out there with, with KP because all Luka did was eat them up inside. Ty Lu. I'm still trying to figure out what coach he is. It seems like it's a it's a mishmash this and that. He's I think he's listening too much to what Paul George wants to do offensively, <laughs> and that's just my opinion. But that that's what I'm seeing, and it, it just seems like the inmates are running the asylum in those huddles. Would you disagree? No, I wouldn't say I disagree with that. I think that for me. Rajon Rondo, bringing him over, I thought was a great move for the Clippers, and I thought it would be a solidifying force. Mm-hmm. But maybe it might be even too tough for him, for his voice in there. But we'll wait and see. I mean, he he played well yesterday for the Clippers and was one of the few bright lights for them. And, you know, if you got playoff Rondo giving you all he's got, that's something that the Clippers need to go ahead and hang their hat on going forward. And need to understand, they, they need to listen to him. Yes, Kawhi has won a championship, but he's not that vocal leader. You have that vocal leader right now in Rajon Rondo. And I think this team needs to go ahead and listen to his guidance at this point in time because he's been there through the ringer many, many times. And I think that if they don't listen to him and still keep on playing their own way and, like you said, playoff P and you know a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Plus, also, I love Zubat's. But the matchup where he constantly gets switched upon, they're exploiting his him in, in that matchup each and every time out. And there's a ton of points being made by Luca on on Zubats, and I think that's killing them. So they got to figure out a way to not have Zubats guard the guards outside because it's just to a point where Luca is just destroying him from the outside. And if that's the case, and that's going to continue, it's going to be a shorter series than what anyone thinks. So I mean, the Clippers fans have got to realize. Zubats is a great player on the inside, but then again, he's like most big men. 99% of most big men can't guard on the outside, and the and the Mavericks are exploiting that. And as long as they continue to do so, this could be a short series. Yeah, you want to talk about getting out coached. I think uh, Carlisle did a job on Lou. <laughs> well, so. I'll tell you what, there's still so many great things that we want to talk about coming up for this Tuesday, but there is a recap. If you want more Go ahead and check out our constant updates as we go ahead and we'll continue to update you on the playoffs. Once again, Philadelphia did squeak out a win. They're leading one game to none in their series. Also as well, the Clippers, like I said, in the West, they're leading one game to nothing. Denver, unfortunately, they fell to Portland in the first game. So Portland leads that series one game to nothing. And as you see on our screen right here, we've got Milwaukee winning in overtime. They lead one game to nothing. And of course, Brooklyn destroying Boston in the second half. They lead one game to nothing, and I think that's the end of that series. Personally, for me, I think that's going to be the end of Boston, and I know that a lot of people will start to go ahead and have murmurs there about the coach and GM even more coming up in the coming days and weeks. But, but guys, before we head on out, I want to go ahead and turn it over to you in regards to what you're looking forward to this week and on Tuesday. So, Laker Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you first, my friend. I appreciate your patience. And again, a big shout out to everyone from JC to V to everyone out there that's left great messages. Renz, J. John, everybody out there, great, great comments so far. I've got so many and we cannot thank you enough. You guys are all keeping positive, so we're keeping positive. And I know they're going to make the adjustments that are made, that are necessary in order to win game two. But Laker Tom, I know you're going to be working on some articles, hopefully not too angry. But I know a lot of them will be focused on primarily trying to go ahead and make changes in the starting lineup and getting getting off to better starts. I think getting off to better starts, I think, is a key for this team. You've always indicated that. They always seem to be playing from behind. I want to hear your thoughts on what you're working on for Lakerholics.com. Well, one of the things when I was listening to the other comments from the other people on the board here is the – Comments about Brooklyn's struggles possibly being because they haven't played together long and uh, that sort of undermines the confidence that you have in them going through 16 games and winning a championship. 
the same arguments that, that Jamie brought up with respect to the Clippers that they've they've only had like I think half a dozen games where they've had the full team on the uh, the same starting lineup out there. One of the things that I think is overlooked with respect to the Lakers is if you go back and you look at the five-man lineups as to what's been most successful this year, it's really been Marcus All starting. He's the only starter that we've had. I mean, LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond have had how many games together? I think if we count the play-in game, four? Is it four? Three or four? It's four. And you're betting, and you're betting your championship repeat hopes that after 25 games without them and uh, three or four games with the two superstars, that Andre Drummond is going to be the difference maker. I think that's a serious miscalculation. I don't have Jamie's confidence that Drummond's not going to start the next game, and I don't know what the I don't know what the dynamic behind that is. Is it really? Anthony Davis saying, I don't want to play. I mean, I read a read a tweet that was real interesting that having a crowded front court with Drummond and Drummond's defender down there in the paint as Davis tries to score in some ways could be worse for him physically than being all alone and playing one-on-one against another center down in the key because it's the traffic that, that screws everything up. You know, when you when it's it's why teams clog the paint. It's very hard when you drive into the paint. If you're Dennis Schroeder, you don't have two or three different angles that you could go. If you're Kyle Kuzma, you don't have a whole bunch of options on the Euro step to get free when you're going down there. And if you're LeBron James on one an, on on one good ankle, uh, that's even a more difficult situation to deal with when you have a lot of traffic in in the key. So maybe the Lakers should think about. What's worked for us before? What worked with us most of the season? What five-man lineup has the best ratios? We get a little bit more playmaking in there. You get uh, the ability for Davis to be able to have the space to operate. But with with Gasol posting outside, you also have the opportunity for there to be room in the key for him to attack the paint. So I'm hoping that we're going to see some adjustments. But I think one of the things that is hurting the Lakers and it's hurting them especially on defense in the rotations, is that these two superstars have not played with the three guys that are starting with them. And that's a handicap that they're going to have to get over. Last year in the bubble, we saw them after eight pretty forgettable games in the bubble at the end of the regular season, we saw the Lakers just sort of blow that first game to Portland and then come back and win the next four and do the same thing in the next series and blow the first game to the Rockets and come back and win the next four. They had 25% of the season last year, Anthony Davis playing at the five. This year, we've had around 8% of the time Davis playing at the five in the regular season. And with his injury and how long he was out, it's it's like all of the lineups that we want to go to, whether it's with Drummond or, or whether it's just with AD at the five, don't seem to be the same lineups. They don't seem to have the same consistency that they have had last year. Everything seems to be tougher this year, whether it's from the injuries, the compressed season, the improvement of the other teams that are competing for the championship. But it's a gauntlet this year. And I think we need to make our adjustments sooner than we did last year if we're going to survive. I'm just trying to get my face out of the way. My face is not a duck. I just wanted to make sure that I'm not the screen yard duck. Everybody yeah. sees up there, right there. I was hey, over the there duck. for a while, Gerald. I know how you got to you got to do one of these. You got to do yeah, a little Captain Morgan. You got to do a little Captain Morgan. Quack 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 okay. indeed. Or but two- also doing some great things to Lakerholics.com. It wasn't a trap game per se, but Admiral I- Akbar still, unfortunately, we blame him anyway. Yeah, we blame yeah. him anyways. But he bring, does have five it. great things. It is Jamie Sweet. And Jamie, I think there's just some tweaks that need to be made, and the Lakers cannot play any worse. And I know I'm saying this, again, as a duck is superimposed over my face. <laughs> but the Lakers just need to make some tweaks, and I think everything's going to be it okay. It looks like a duck. It talks like a duck. <laughs> and uh, 
Well, when I'm yelling at you, I quack like a duck. How right, about that? There we go. There we go. You know, it's all right. We, you know, maybe stream here will start to flow you some cash for uh, sponsorship. Listen, I think that there's a few different things we'll see coming out of the gates next next game. I don't disagree with the notion of trying to pull uh, Aiton out of the paint by using Gasol. I don't know that Gasol is – this is the problem. It's that we're letting quality shots – happen while we are not getting quality shots we played into what phoenix wanted us to do and that starts at the top and it's going to come down so you know this this is what i think last year what we discovered is that this coaching staff kind of needs a body of evidence to go off of like they're going to go into every season with the blueprint right whatever the blueprint was for the regular season whether it's mcgee starting and then howard comes in and so on and so forth that's how they're going to start every single season series. It won't be until the blueprint doesn't work that they make an adjustment. And that's just what they do, whether you like it or not. Gerald's a duck right now, whether he likes it or not. It's just <laughs> how it is. It's just how it is. So I think that we will see, I felt, I think we'll see more Gasol or we'll, not more, we'll see any Gasol in tomorrow's game. I think Tuesday. we'll see more, yeah, uh, sorry, Tuesday's game. I think we'll see more THT over KCP, if KCP proves ineffective like he was today, uh, especially on defense. I have to agree with Al Rob. I, I, I just thought, you know, KCP has been doing this all season, and it's Ian Kuzma are having that same, like, oh, man, I got that big contract. Woo! All right. We are good for a couple of years now. Uh, we don't have to play our best. Tradable contract. Whatever. They're, they're going to get paid. I don't think they care when it happens. Uh, they're, 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 it's going to be money in the bank. So, you know, I thought that, like, when KCP was at his best was when he was on a one-year deal every season. It was like, oh, man, I got to get that one-year deal again. But, you you know, I, I, kudos to KCP and his agent and Kuzma and his agent. They did their job, and they got the money they're supposed to get. We can't have those guys play like they did today and us and win, you know. And we can't have LeBron and AD play like they did today and win. It's as simple as that. And just one thing about the rest of the playoffs. One, this is, I think, the first year, the first playoffs in forever that Portland is, like, pretty healthy in the playoffs. You know, CJ is healthy. Dame's healthy. Nurkic is healthy. Melo's still Melo. I don't care what you think about Melo. That's Carmelo Anthony. He's like one of the best basketball players that's ever played the game. That's a team that is just looking to break out and do some damage in the playoffs this year if they can stay healthy. Well, the, and, the, the big difference for them is Norm Powell. He's an elite Who body. Gerald wanted to see on the Lakers. Yeah. I was 100% behind that. Tra- I was all in on that Norman Powell deal. And I wish that had happened over any other deal that was out there. Portland got a great player in Norman Powell. Would have helped to have Kyle Lowry today. Eh, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, maybe. Uh, Schroeder... Uh, I'm not a big Dennis Schroeder fan. I don't think it's a big secret. So, you know, I'm, I am I would much rather see those minutes go to somebody else at this point. I just don't think he's a very good point guard. I think he's more of a combo guard. You know, like Jordan Clarkson. We used to argue, like, Jordan Clarkson is a point guard. We were right. He wasn't. <laughs> he's a better shooting guard, off-ball guard. And I think that that's true. I mean, we saw that last season in OKC with Chris Paul. Schroeder had a great season playing off of Chris Paul. And he's had an OK season playing off LeBron. Because we keep trying to force him into the point guard role that he, again, and this is where I think Tom's onto something with like what's going on with like front office back dealings with agents and stuff. I mean, it feels like we're like going to hang our hat on Dennis Schroeder as point guard, whether we win or lose and same with some other guys on the team. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the playoffs. And Christoph Porzingis had a terrible game against the Clippers. Not terrible, but not a KP game. And so there's a lot of issues going on in the playoffs for some teams that where we all thought maybe would do better than they ought to do. Um, I think you're right, though, Gerald. A couple of tweaks here and there, and this is a different game. It is what it is. These things happen, and we're free the better throw. team. Free throw. Start there. Start there. But we won't shoot so many free throws. I can guarantee you that in game two. So we'll see. We'll see. I think it comes more with taking care of our two best ball handlers. Got to take better care of the ball, generate more quality shots for guys that need quality shots to get going. And that's that's where this game kind of turned. We, we they stopped our they, they stopped our point of attack really well, and we never adjusted. Also here today, sharing his thoughts again. We just truly appreciate everyone out there, especially on the chat boards. If you hadn't already said your word on that, please, we'd love to hear your thoughts. It's been tremendous. I mean, again, thanks so much to V. Thanks so much to JC. Thanks so much to Felix, Renz, J. John. You've been tremendous on the chat boards today. But before we end on out, Mister L. Rob. 
we already talked about what you were looking forward to seeing the adjustments that were made, but I, I, I think you and I are, can agree upon that. We think that the Lakers in game two will make the adjustments necessary in order to get the job done. Yes. I would be very, very, very surprised if the Lakers go down zero two to Phoenix. Stranger things can happen. It wouldn't be the end of the series, but it definitely would be a little bit concerning if you lose another game. So I don't, I don't, I think the biggest adjustment is in your attitude. You get, when you get out rebounded by 14 rebounds, when you give up 16 offensive rebounds, you got out work. You got out work, plain and simple. So I say play it back, bring the right effort, bring the right intensity, and handle your business. There's no, there, I mean, I'm not discounting what Tom says. There will certainly be times where you would, the Lakers' best lineup is definitely with AD at the five. Okay. That's no secret. And there's going to be times where we will need to do that, but I don't think they want to, you know, full bore. I don't, I don't, I don't see the need to do that. I think you're wasting the opportunity to punish this team, um, and we'll 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 pull that card out when we when we have to later on. But uh, I don't think you need to do it right now. So I just look forward to like bringing more effort and intensity and saying playing like they are the defending champions. Right now they just you know they're out there like a Y team. Let's show up, you know, let's play and see what happens. I agree with you, L. Rob. I think we will see a more spirited. I think that fight, or that almost fight, between Montrez Harrell, Alex Caruso, Cameron Payne. I think that stirred something with the Lakers. I think it was just too late for them to go ahead and generate anything or generate enough in order to come back. But I think that's something that's going to set a precedent for Game Two, and also the cheap shot by Chris Paul to LeBron James, undercutting him and him landing on his shoulder. I think that is going to start sending a message. I mean, if Phoenix, you know, continues to do that, if they want to go down that road, if they want to start showing their their inexperience, then they're going to find more than they bargained for when it comes to the Lakers who have gone down that road on more than one occasion. So we'll wait and see what happens, but I'm looking forward to a better game too. And I know who also is looking for, forward to a better game too is Magic Man. So before we head on out, my friend, your closing thoughts and what you're looking forward to on Tuesday night. It will be starting at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern to everyone that's out there on Tuesday. So we'll be on most likely around 9, 30, 10, as always, when it comes to the late games. But I want to hear your thoughts on game two before we head on out. Game two is a big one for uh, LeBron James teams historically. Since 2009, LeBron James, in series, has only lost his last series loss was to the Orlando Magic after losing Game One outside of a finals that since 2009. So there's a hell of a thing to be said for him being able to make it, and for anybody who's a fan of him and his team to have some faith that he knows what he do. Um, just to piggyback off what Tom said, uh, I don't think he's playing off one leg. I saw him move pretty well. He, he seemed to be passive-aggressive, Tom. That's, that's what I would say. But I saw him be passive-aggressive last year in the first game against Portland, and we lost that one, too. We also lost game one here to uh, Houston, and we lost by 15 points. We didn't lose by, by nine. We almost lost by 20. So we made adjustments. LeBron and AD came back, and they almost beat Houston by 25. So I'm not expecting a runaway victory. I, I think it'll come down to the fourth quarter, and I expect to execute and win a close ball game. Well, I expect more aggression from LeBron and AD. I expect a better performance from LeBron and AD come Tuesday. And I'm expecting a better performance from the Lakers going forward and this series, and I expect, again, a lot more good things from the Lakers going forward on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens. It is coming this Tuesday, the Lakers game two against Phoenix. I am no longer the duck. Sorry, Sean, you're the duck right now. I apologize. <laughs> the duck is eating your head as we speak. But that is StreamYard. Special thanks to StreamYard for providing the duck and, of course, obviously the video from it. But I wanted to go ahead and make sure everybody knows, please catch everything you can that's going down at Lakerholics.com. All the news, all the articles, and everything going forward in the NBA playoffs. Please check it out today at Lakerholics.com. If you want to be part of our Facebook group at Lakerholics, we 
toss a lot of great things, including Jamie Sweet drops his articles there. He gives you guys at Lakerholics on Facebook the sneak peek that's right there that's each right. and every time out. But also want to give a big shout out to our friends at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. They've got a ton of basketball shows. And with the playoffs here, you want to go ahead and check out all the shows from all the other teams that they represent at hoopheadspod.com. And, of course, remember, catch us every Sunday morning on Dash Radio. You can hear us. Please check us out, Dash Radio. And, of course, everybody right there at hoopheadspod.com. V. Garcia, Magic Duck, Laker Tom, you're my guy. <laughs> v. Garcia, if Gerald doesn't wear his hat and get, gets a free frosty on Tuesday, we riot. So we'll see what happens there. Hey, I just like the fact that I wore a Lakers hat and went into a Wendy's and got a free frosty. I just like doing that. I don't, I don't think anybody else can do it. So I'm not saying that this is a national policy for Wendy's, but you know what? It was just nice that one time. We'll see what happens. I may do it again sometime soon. But guys, we truly appreciate L. Rob, Jamie Sweet, Laker Tom, and Magic Man for stopping by. Rafael Barlow hinted he may be on Tuesday's show. I'm hoping everyone here will be as well. We're going to have a great chat again, talking about game two, and I'm expecting for good things because the Lakers will come back. Have faith, everyone. The Lakers will come back. We've been through this song and dance before, just a few months ago, in the first two rounds. <laughs> So this should be like old hat for us with the Lakers losing 99-90 to in game one. I expect a lot better things. I expect Frank Vogel to make some tweaks and changes and adjustments. I don't expect Laker Tom to be happy with all of them, but I do expect the Lakers win. And I expect to go ahead and be talking about that on Tuesday, right after the game, right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.